Oh boy, you are a dinosaur. Get over here. Man, okay. Teleport, Alpha, on it. Okay, okay, mash A, mash, 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 mash. Okay, teleport, Alpha. Mm -hmm. Here, okay, now mash A, mash, 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 just like the show. No! Okay. <sighs> teleport, Alpha, on it. Oh boy, oh boy, this is gonna be close, this is gonna be close. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Wow, that was close. That was really close. Oh, hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Earthbound. When we last left off, I trudged through the Lost Underworld, and Jeff got to a high enough level so that he could repair the broken antenna, which is now his ultimate weapon, the the Gallic Gu sorry, Gaia Beam. It is the Gaia Beam, and it's a good weapon, and that's why he has it. Uh, this time we're going to be going through the Fire Spring, which is home to the last Your Sanctuary location. And this area is pretty hard if you don't prepare for it. Most enemies here know some form of PSI Fire. Um, I have two pendants, one on Paula, one on Pooh, that protects from that. And so I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be worrying that much about it. But still, it's it's a concern. I could still get insta popped on Pooh and Ness. Um, you know, I'm, I've been using the speed capsules on Ness, but I just, I kind of thought about something beginning of this, this episode. If I'm using my speed capsules on the slowest member, one of the slowest members of the party, trying to make him faster, why am I doing that when I have a person who is capable of using life up that is already one of the fastest members of the group? Shouldn't I be using it on him to make sure that he acts first? My answer is yes. Pooh's level is now 62. Offense 1 by 2, defense 1 by 1, luck 1 by 1, HP 1 by 2, PP 1 by 2. Now, for the enemies here, um, there's there is one enemy that's very common. Wow, they can climb ladders? I didn't know that. Uh, but one of them is the Soul Consuming Flame. While it does have some substantial attacks, uh, it, two bash attacks are enough to take it out. And these are two bash attacks from almost any, any member of the party. So, killing these are is pretty easy. Uh, but then there all, there's also the Evil Elemental, which I believe is capable of possession. I'm not sure. Uh, so I want to take that thing out first. I'll use some splash damage here. Um, and just take it out with bash attacks since they're the most effective at taking out ghosts. You'd think it'd be psychic atta attacks that are good against ghosts, but apparently not. Fire the heavy bazooka, and I should have used Jeff's new weapon. In fact, defend, defend, shoot, defend. What is his? How much damage does this do? A lot of damage. Actually, more than his broken or er, than his heavy bazooka. That's that's the power of the Gaia beam. I mean, if I didn't have his ultimate weapon right now, he wouldn't be dealing near as much damage. So up this rope is uh, a little a little bit of a maze. This entire area is almost a maze, as it will lead me through. Oh boy, it'll lead me through this area all to get like one present and then lead me back. It's kind of crazy. So this is the major psychic psycho, which these are the enemies that you want to be watching out for because not only do they contain a one in one twenty eight rare drop pendant called the star pendant, uh, they also are pretty powerful as they know PSI fire alpha and beta. So we want to take these things out as quickly as you can. Um, now they're also weak to PSI Freeze, which is strange if you are a, a Pokemon guy, uh, because Ice types are weak to Fire. But I thought about it, and it makes sense. Pokemon has lied to us our entire lives. That's not true. If you think about it, Fire is weak to Water, right? So, Ice, if it's hit by Fire, or if it is used on Fire, it just melts into Water, and then destroys the Fire. See, we've been lied to by Pokemon. It is it has been a conspiracy by Nintendo to teach us that ice is not a good uh, fire retardant. But really, when do you see forest fires in Antarctica? Never. <laughs> it's because of the ice. It clearly is. You <laughs> ignore the fact that there are no trees in Antarctica. It was because of the ice that there are no forest fires. I won. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Lots of stuff. Oh, life up Omega, that's good. Offense 1 by 1, speed 1 by 1, guts 1 by 1, IQ 1 by 1, HP 1 by 3, PP 1 by 2. So, I'm I'm kind of hoping that I'll just bump into one of the rare drops from the major psychic psychos, but I'm not going to I'm not going to get my hopes up, but it'd be really cool if I got one without actually trying to. Okay, bag of Dragonite, and it went to Paula, which is just the person I wanted it to go to. 
Okay, I didn't mean to show this battle, but I think I need to. The Soul Consuming Fire just did an attack that did 300 damage to Ness. That's crazy. And it's also bogus, so I'm going to use Life Up Omega and get a great opportunity to show this move off. What it does is it restores 400 HP to every, yes, every member of the party. Which is really good. That's really good. Life Up. Maxed out, maxed out, maxed out, maxed out. It is the ultimate healing ability, and that's why it's called Omega. It is the ability to end all psychic abilities, and also the soul consuming fire. Ugh. That's so annoying. Um, you know what? No, let's just end the battle before he takes the damage instead of healing it off. That makes m the most sense. And I won! Wow! Great! Got 8,000 experience from a drop. Run here. Uh, I got past him. Good. Okay, th that's going to be a lot of cutting in this episode just because I'm going through places and backtracking. Like I said, this area is a vertical maze, as it were. As, like, look at this. There's lava right here, so we can't get past it. Oh no, our lives are over. But no, there's just a cave right here that brings us right through it. But that's the point. Nothing in this area is simple. Everything you do has to be the most convoluted thing in the world. Jeff Suttles and now 65, offense 1 by 1, HP 1 by 1. <laughs> Yay, and another battle, wow. Enemies like to be cheap in this area, soul consuming flame. Showing this just because it's going to be a really quick battle. Uh, shoot it, dog. I don't know why I throw the dogs in there. It's it's partially because of my mom. I've talked about this before. I started saying dog just to be ironic and funny um, because it's really not that threatening if you joke around with it. Um, and I got my mom saying it, which in turn started a cycle of me saying it more, which made her say it more, and now it's just this continuous cycle of everything. Okay, now I'm about to do something that'll make your eyes fall out of their sockets. Drop the diamond pendant. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but there's a cherub's band inside this thing, which gives 70 defense, 20 luck, and immunity to hypnosis, and that's going to be the focus for this episode. Getting Ness's inventory to a point where he's near invincible and he will be fine on his own, because very soon, he will be the only member in the party that matters. And what are you doing, Fire? So at that point, I want Ness to be able to hold his own against everyone. So that pretty much means the uh, Paula's C pendant, yeah, her C pendant is going to be going to Ness soon and other stuff like that. So he's going to be beefed up. He's going to get the uh, the cream of the crop. And I'm going to go in here. Phew, because if I go in here, uh, there is an infinitely spawning butterfly. So I'm going to use Life Up Omega, heal up everyone, which is really nice that I can use that and um, not have to use Life Up Beta four times. And then I can just heal up the stuff because it's 24 PP that heals up the entire party. And a red swirl, of course. Run! Ah! Sometimes the the way you don't want to go is actually the way you do want to go. As going up doesn't mean going forward, it just means going up. And also those those fires made a beautiful little heart right there. That was cute. That's that's something that is that's a problem. There's a horn of life in here. That's something I just noticed. I have not been showing level ups like I used to. I'm going to start doing that. As much as I think that it extends the episode, it's kind of necessary because otherwise I'm not showing progress. All right, let's go through this door because it will lead us to this hallway, oh boy. Sometimes the best defense is running away, which is what I did and then got a green swirl somehow. My goodness, the cuts in this episode are going to be painful. Jeff's level is now 66. Offense one by one, defense one by one, luck one by one, HP one by one. And even with my map, I have no idea where I am. Oh, there I am, okay. This is getting crazy. I'm having cut everywhere, and the enemies are just problematic. Uh, let's fight them. I don't think that... That's something I haven't talked about, and I've I've talked about it in failed takes, but that's just what they were, failed takes or something, or practice or whatever, um, where there are actually enemy factions. I've never gone over... Like, I've never said this in a recording before, but there are enemy factions. Certain enemies will never appear with other enemies. Uh... One prime example, I believe, was in Moonside. Like, the Dolly's Clocks, I believe, would always appear in a battle alone. And they were they were just enemy factions. And it's it was really cool. Um, Earthbound has a lot of hidden details that 
you don't really see. Um, there's another one that I have yet to go over, but I'll go over it when I see it. But we've seen it almost every episode now since the very beginning. In fact, let's get into battle here. And a red swirl because the enemy warped. But watch what the enemies do. When they act, they do something. It, it flashed black. This one flashed white. Notice the difference there. The evil elemental way A flashed white and then did a physical attack. The uh, elemental B did it flashed black and then did something else. And that's actually a thing, which again, I have not gone over and I actually learned very recently. But if they flash white, that means they're doing a physical attack. If they flash black, that means they're doing something else. And if they don't flash at all, that means they're doing a psychic attack. But like, that is the smallest detail I would have never thought of. But it it matters, which is the real, it's the real genius of this game. That's where you're going to find it, in the small details, from what one uh, NPC says in a corner, to what the enemies do when they, when they do an action. It's, it's all part of the genius of this game, and makes it so consecutive playthroughs lend more. Like, now that you know that, if you didn't know that before, now you're going to keep your eyes open, and if you play the game, or uh, if you play the game again, or for the first time, you're going to notice things like that. And that's what makes this game truly great. Who's levels now 64? Oh baby! Offense 1 by 4, oh baby! Defense 1 by 3, oh baby! Speed 1 by 4, Guts 1 by 1, Vitality 1 by 1, IQ 1 by 1, Luck 1 by 1, HP 1 by 8, PP 1 by 6. Great level up. Good, I, that was the level up I chose to show, and can I fight him with a green swirl? No. Going through this door, we're actually almost at the end of the fire spring. Once again, an insane thing, but that's how that's how the cookie crumbles. There are so many cuts this episode, I literally have no clue how long the episode will be. But I'm also, I'm showing some of these battles just so I can talk, and so if it is short, then I can extend it. Or if it's long, then I can cut out these battles, because sometimes I'm not saying anything worthwhile in them. Uh, but that's how Let's Playing works, which is my suggestion to you if you decide to Let's Play. Make sure you always talk, because sometimes if you need to cut to something, you can include it, or if you need to make the episode longer, you can do the thing. Fire beta, oh boy. Uh, I'm also showing these battles so that if I get a star pendant, or I'm, I'm commentating these battles so that if I get a star pendant, then I can, uh, I can have commentary to go with it. I don't have to post commentator or something. And then it seems like I'm actually, I know what I'm doing, which half the time I don't. I, half the time I really don't. I got experience. Life up, Omega, 400, 400, maxed out, maxed out. Look at that, it's so beautiful, I love this move. Let's go through door F, which brings us where? Does, door F brings us to the end. Okay, so I need to go through this door. Ah, that's, that's cool. The, the one that looks like a secret is actually where you need to go, and the one that's stri strikingly obvious is the secret. I see game. Uh, but actually, this secret is not that good. What it gives us is the Moonbeam Gun, which is a weapon for Jeff that is not as good as the weapon he has. So I'm actually just going to turn around and drop this because I don't need the Moonbeam Beam Gum. Uh, gum. Moonbeam Gun, not gum. Uh, because I have a weapon that is far superior in the form of the Gaia Beam. So I don't need the Moon Moonbeam Gun. That's hard to say really is. Oh boy. Great swirl somehow. Insta-kill. Awesome. Did I get a rare drop? No, but my guts went up by one, HP went up by one, PP went up by one. <gasps> oh, man. You raised my hopes up. I was hoping that that was a star pendant, that my dreams have come true. But uh, it, w it wasn't to be. Ness's level is now 72. Oh, baby! Offensive 1 by 3, IQ 1 up by 2, Luck 1 up by 2, HP 1 up by 3, P that rocks! PP 1 up by 8. Once again, focusing on Ness because he needs to get bigger. I'm also going to fight this enemy just for fun. And I got a green swirl. So, we've come a long way, but this is the end of the Fire Spring Sanctuary. And this is where I need to get ready for the battle ahead. I have a feeling that- actually, uh, let me check before I just waste some PP. Um, I'm 100 off max, I'm max, I'm max, and I'm about 70 off max? Okay, so, let's just- let's not waste PP. Actually, 5-8, no, that works, okay. So, use Alpha on Poo. 
max him out, and then use beta on... No, alpha. I can get away with, uh, with alpha. Alpha on Ness, and max out his HP. So I'm all... I'm completely maxed, and let me look at Ness's inventory. It looks good. Uh, I will have a one chance to revise it, uh, make one final revision before stuff happens, but I just want to make sure that it looks good and that you guys know what it's supposed to look like. So, this is the battle to end all battles. You finally got here. This is the 8th Your Sanctuary location. But it's mine now. Take it from me, if you dare. Say hello to my favorite boss fight in the entire game. This dog is on fire. It's sticking on fire. That's amazing. F dogs on fire are one of my favorite things behind beef jerky, tacos, and Hawaiian fish. Uh, but this enemy is pretty powerful. However, unlike s many of the bosses or all of the bosses we've faced thus far, this is one boss that I do not want to use p uh, multi bottle rockets on, and you will see why. The carbon dog has some devastating fire attacks, but it is weak to freeze, so using our most powerful freeze attacks, par for the course, we should be able to finish it off quickly. But use heavy bazooka, not a multi bottle rocket. Actually, you know what? No. Let's just have. Let's just shoot it. Uh, and then. Uh, PSI, right? <laughs> I always forget that Pooh is not a physical attacker, so I'm like, well, how, how I do Pooh? Don't quote me on that. Okay, so PSI Freeze Gamma, or Freezeg, and Freezo hits and does damage, and physical attacks, and physical attacks, making a loud piercing howl, so it's doing nothing. That's interesting. Uh, it's interesting for it, but also amazing for me, because that means I can just finish it off with a couple more attacks. It has a, a fair amount of HP, but I'm kind of whittling through it easily. I'm dealing all of the freezing attacks, watering it down, solidifying its body so it can't act this turn, locking it down, and preventing it from doing anything. I'm spitting it down its eye and doing the stuff. Carbon Dog gave off a rainbow of colors and deflected the attack that I just used. This is why I didn't want to use multi bottle rockets, because when the Carbon Dog gets down low enough, it will turn into the Diamond Dog, and it adopts a power shield, which will deflect the last attack that was used if it was physical. So if I had used a multi bottle rocket there, and it killed it, it would have insta-killed Jeff. So that's why I don't want to do anything. Now for this turn, I am going to focus on healing up the party, since I think they've taken... Actually, no, I'll just heal up uh, nah, uh, Jeff, because he's the only one who's taken damage. And I'm going to use uh, Psychic Attacks with everyone, as always. However, Jeff is going to do one special thing. Jeff, you're going to use an item that I got on you a long time ago. You're going to be using the Neutralizer, which is... The, this is the battle that I wanted to use it. Right when I got it, I said, there's a battle I know I would want to use this item on in, and I'm using it now. The Neutralizer will neutralize all effects of PSI, so any of my Psychic Shields will be gone. Any of the enemy's Psychic Shields wi will also be gone. So, his Power Shield that will deflect my multi bottle Rockets is now gone. Sad for him, great for me. And it's going to do it again. Of course it is! I was going to be all cool there and do it, and use a multi bottle rocket to finish it off, but no! It couldn't be that easy, could it? Uh, PSI shield, no, I'm not... Defense down, that's stupid. Um, I'm trying to think, is there any anything clever I could do? But no, doesn't really look like it. Let's just use some last attacks, finish it off. Sadly, the only thing that Jeff can do... You know what, no. Jeff, do this. Uh, now, the P the Diamond Dog knows some attacks that are devastating. It does know something that can diamondize party members just straight up. It also knows flash attacks, so if my party's not protected by flash, potentially he could insta-kill the entire party with one move. Not great, but it's not that bad. I'm, I'm really not worried about this battle. I have it in the bag, almost. Uh, just a couple more attacks should finish him off. So Frizo will come in. Maybe... No, it won't solidify him. And Rock and Gamma, since there's no healing necessary, will deal a lot of damage. And also, Defense Shower will come in and raise my defense, which is nice. And he has... the only damage he has dealt to me thus far is that recoil damage from the shield. And that's surprising. I've, 
I've had so many battles here where it was just down to the wire, where the only person I had alive was Paula, and I was just using PSI Magnet to drain his PP so I could use Freeze. I've had so many close battles with the Diamond Dog that I was really expecting this battle to be harder, but it, I, it's not. In fact, I'm really tempted to use this because I have a feeling it's going to finish him off. In fact, you know what? I'm going for broke. I'm going to use the multi bottle rocket, even though I'm pretty sure it will d kill me. I just want to use it just to show how much better than the carbon or the diamond dog I am. But another re reason why I like this boss so much is I'm a big fan of science. So a carbon dog turning into a diamond dog under pressure, under us ba attacking him, recoil damage. Lel. <laughs> uh, but the fact that the carbon dog, when put under pressure and heat, turns into the diamond dog, that's just cool for a science nerd like me. But that was actually also cool, how I used the uh, multi-bottle rocket. It killed the carbon, the uh, diamond dog, but you could hear there that the recoil, recoil damage was actually coming back at Jeff, but I cancelled it because of the, the win animation. That's awesome. Jeff's level is now 67. Guts went up by 1, IQ went up by 1, HP went up by 1. Pooh's level is now 65. Offense went up by 1, HP went up by 2. And that is it. That's all she wrote. And thus, with this, that is the last Your Sanctuary location. Uh, I think we're actually getting pretty far up on time. No, we're good! Even with the cuts, this is probably going to be a short episode. So, I just want to make sure that everything's good, which part of that includes me... Uh, let's see. Uh, real quick. Rabbit's foot is on the body, so I'd be unequipping the souvenir coin for the... No? Okay. So, I need to unequip the rabbit's foot. In fact, no, no, no. I, w I need to give this rabbit's foot to someone else. Give to Paula. And then, I need to equip the... Where is that? The C pendant. Where is the C pendant? C pendant? C pendant! I went right over it like three times. C pendant! Give that to Ness, and then have Paula equip the rabbit's foot, which will which will put her speed to sky high, but also have Ness equip the C pendant, which will grant him immunity to a bunch of different things, which is going to be something that I'll need. This is my inventory. It's pretty good. I'm, I'm proud of this. Uh, let's give the magic truffle to myself, and then move on with gusto, with vigor, with valor, with bravo, and plenty of Johnny. Let's go to the last Your Sanctuary location of the game. This is marking the end. We are... we're episodes away from meeting the end. And this is what it all came down to. The last location. Let's drink it in. Ness had the feeling that he was being watched by himself as a baby. Ness's soundstone recorded the melody of the fire spring.
Ness. Hmm. I think Ness is the right name for him. Ness. He smiled just from hearing his own name. Do you think he likes his name? Try putting that red cap on him. <laughs> it's too big, but it looks good on him. I hope King won't be jealous of the baby. Let's celebrate with some, some steak. This baby will grow up to be a hard worker, just like you. I don't think he needs to be rich or famous, but I want him to be a thoughtful, strong boy. That's odd. The baby bottle that he pointed at seemed to move a little bit. Hmm. Welcome to the world of Ness's mind. Yeah, not what you expected. You probably expected some grandiose thing, born of the adventures that we've had thus far. We've traveled, we've gone from level 1 to level 72. And now we're ending that off with going through one of the most crazy areas I've ever seen, a dream world. This is not Magic Can, because Magic can do things, but this is instead Magican, the world of dreams. Also, I love the sound that Nessa makes when he walks around on his stocking feet. So this is his dream world, and next episode, we're going to be exploring that, seeing why Ness is here, why this entire adventure has led up to this, and see why our house, why Ness's house, in the, is in the middle of a field on a peninsula with rabbits and carrots and tomatoes and rabbits and houses and butterflies and everything. We're going to be seeing why all this is here, why he's there, yeah. I'll be seeing you next time for another Pal Plays Earthbound, where we're probably going to have one of the most interesting episodes I've ever had on this channel. It's going to be silly, it's going to be hard since there are enemies, but I've prepared for it this time. Last time I was in this area, I didn't prepare for it too well, but this time, I'm ready. See you guys next time, while I hide behind this tomato and munch on it. Nom nom nom. 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 I release new episodes of, of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and if you like this episode, then comment and tell me how you the next episode so that you would like it.